OpenAI making its first cybersecurity investment. It's a big one. It's in a company called Adaptive Security, which uh, simulates AI-powered cyber attacks um, and provides risk assessments. Today, the company announcing it raised $43 million in its latest rounding, uh, funding round, uh, which also includes and was led by Andreessen Horowitz, OpenAI's startup fund as well. And um, I should say, we met, and he played this, it was almost like a party trick at a lunch on me, where all of a sudden I started to hear my voice off of his phone. Um, the Squawk Box team uh, gave you uh, some, uh, well, the show gives you it. So uh, take a look at, uh, or a listen, at how this all works. This is, this is a sample of uh, our own AI-generated voices, and you can start to think about how scary this can really be. Let's talk about the tech. Are deep fakes really that big of a threat to companies right now? This is Becky. Just to make sure I understand, you're saying this kind of attack is already happening in real scenarios? Hi there, this is Joe Kernan. Someone gets a recording of my voice from, what, Squawk Box Clips Online, and then they can just call up our finance team pretending to be me. Do people actually fall for this stuff? I mean, wouldn't someone notice it's not really me on the other end of the line? So joining us right now, first on CNBC, is Brian Long. He's the co-founder of uh, and uh, CEO of uh, Adaptive Security. I did say, I mean, it was a little bit different, and maybe it's because you know we know what's going on. You can hear it in the voice. Yeah. But like when we're I looking, saw, we're looking, we're looking. When that. I was sitting with you, <laughs> and all of a sudden you broke out your phone and said, "Hey, do you want to hear yourself?" Mm -hmm. I was sort of in shock, um, and the idea that somebody could call somebody I know and say, "Hey, this is Andrew," and ask somebody to move money on my behalf is sort of a, a shocking and scary thing. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild, and the technology is getting better and better every day. So I think it's about 85% the way there today, but I think in the next year, you're going to see it hit the mid-90s. And I think beyond just hearing the voice and likeness of the individual, um, and this is really important, it's not just voice and likeness. It's trained in all the open source information out there about you. Right. So clips about you, information well, about so you, the, et cetera. No I, so, well, the other yeah. thing that, that came out of our little lunch together was, you know, I now have a password for our family because you and I discussed this idea that somebody could call you. You could think it's your son or your wife yeah, or your daughter or whatever and ask and know enough about you based on what's on the Internet to maybe have like a genuine conversation but if they don't know this one little thing, maybe that's going to. So in, in the business context, is everybody going to have to have a password? If you're the CEO of a company who has to interact with a CFO, for example, because you don't want the CEO, the fake CEO calling the CFO saying, hey, you got to move X amount of money to you know, transfer dollars. money to right. so and so. Yeah, so uh, two things there, two tips. I think, number one, uh, you do want to make sure you have some sort of passcode, particularly for things uh, with, with family members or something in your company that's a really important transaction. And then number two, uh, I would definitely delete your uh, audio voicemail on your phone. Uh, so, you know, when someone calls you, if it's your voice today, uh, change that to the robot. You do not want your voice out there, especially if you're not a public person. My public people like you guys, doesn't matter for us. you're going to be out yeah. there. But really what we're going to see happen at a lot of companies on these attacks in the next couple of years, they're not going to target the CEO or the CEO executive. They're going to target the controller. They're going to target the people in middle management where they can get your voice in just three seconds from a voicemail and then right. become them, right? Or, or they can call you at home and you answer the phone. Yeah, I mean, look, you can find anyone's phone number, almost you know, over 90% of people's phone numbers we can find in right. seconds online. But how worried that. are you that in this, uh, this goes back to the larger question maybe about social media. In a universe where everybody is sharing, potentially oversharing, and there's video of, I mean, you know, we're obviously on TV every day, but I would say a good portion of America in some way or another, is actually talking on either video or audio on things all the time now. It is, it is. And look, the, the number of these attacks are up by a tremendous amount. They're up by 17x last year. There are over 100,000 deepfake attacks in the U.S. alone. And we're going to continue to see that exponential growth. What's so, the worst or, or most clever attack you've heard of so far? You know, there was an attack that got a little bit of the news at the end of last year uh, in which someone uh, did a uh, deepfake impersonating the foreign minister from Ukraine. 
and actually had a deep fake phone call um, with the chairman of the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee and was able to, like, you know, gather information. There's a lot more of these attacks happening every day. When I started talking to customers about this a little over a year ago, I would have about 5% of executives that hadn't experienced an attack at their company. Now it's probably about 30 40%. And it's kind of your classic when you see a mouse, there's 20 more in the wall situation. What does your product do exactly? Yeah, so what our company does is we help prevent these type of AI-powered cyber attacks. And we do it with two things. Number one, we simulate AI-powered attacks um, so we can figure out you know, what those attacks might look like at your company. And then number two, when someone fails one of those simulations, we then train them on what not to do next time. So we try to bring that risk if down. I, if I have a cold, am I not going to be able to get through the security as myself because I don't sound like myself? <laughs> I think you're still going to be able to get through it as yourself. And frankly, being able to detect whether it's you or a deep fake in the next couple of years is going to be nearly impossible, right? Because it's just going to get harder and harder to tell the difference. I think what companies are going to have to have are just better controls. Well, how, are and, you, how does your company, if, if in the next few years it's impossible to tell the difference between a deep fake and a real thing, how does your company have a future? Yeah, so we, we simulate those attacks at businesses in order to figure out where a company's controls uh, would fall apart, and then we train those individuals so on how to follow those controls. there are companies, for example, that work with, I mean, there, there are security companies that work with big corporations, for example, to um, perform phishing attacks on employees just to see who's vulnerable, who's not. Is that what we're talking about, but in, a, in an AI context? That, that's exactly what we're talking about. But in the AI context, those attacks are not just happening on email, where predominantly these attacks historically, you know, you've probably right. gotten emails about it. Where they're happening now are over the phone. So real-time voice phone calls, right. uh, SMS-based messages, even over video chat and Zoom, where we don't have the protections Two that may exist of, in email. news you can use, I'm curious about, um, you can actually spoof your own phone number now, or, or, or attackers can spoof a phone number so that it would show that Andrew Sorkin is calling somebody else. How does that work, just so we understand it? And what are we supposed to do about that? <laughs> yeah, so look, I, I think when you're getting a phone call, you really need to not trust who the person is on the other end. Um, there are ways for individuals to make it seem like they're calling from someone else. Um, and it, the scam's getting bigger and bigger. I had one of these voice attacks actually call me yesterday. Um, so again, uh, you know, you need to be careful. You need to really be thoughtful when you're hearing someone ask for things, particularly when there's a lot of urgency around the how did, request. How did they, how did you know it was a scam? They, they asked you for money right away? Yeah, yeah. They were, they were trying to get uh, into a cryptocurrency account and they were, you know, saying they were calling from that account and they had my, my information. And then if you combine this deep fake with Oz Perlman, and he's there, <laughs> oh, the magician. And, and then they say, you know, remember the go kart thing he came up with? They, they know all your, he knows all your secrets. So any passwords or what's your favorite uh, winter sport? He knows. He know, so you and can't stop him. I, I think the thing. You couldn't stop him. Uh, Just give up. Oz is, is amazing, and it's also <laughs> hard to compete with Donut Day. But look, I, I think that beyond that, um, the thing to remind her here is that instead of it just being an individual on the other end of the scam or on the other end of the attack, it's AI. So it can operate at unlimited scale. It can call every single person at the company, oh, and it only gosh. needs one of them to work, where historically wow. they would have to go through the list and they'd only get through a That's few people. Terrifying. Now they can call all 50,000 people at a company and get through it.